So if you've got caught that, I just said, read this last little bit, because there's more than one potential reason for it. They're not necessarily linked together. Uh, let's look at regression. So, um, so this kind of gives us our line the best fit. And, and do you know what? If you look back on the calculator once again, something that we're not supposed to do, the A and the B are there. In, in this case, because of what I pressed on the calculator, the A is the gradient and the B is the intercept. Uh, whereas they've got it the other way around, we have the A is the intercept and the B is the gradient. But there is, if you press F2 instead of F1, you get, get that exactly the same. So your calculator does it for you, but we don't use that. No. So we've got a straight line. Now you've got to be careful when you're explaining about the gradient and the intercept in context. Uh, this kind of like being careful about what the gradient means is really important. Um, right, so let's have a look at question one. So question one says the graph shows the amount of time spent revising and their score. So as you would expect, the more time you revise, the better your score is. So we've got um, an equation which is m equals 0 0.8t plus 5 and an r value of 0 0.87. So what are the units of the gradient? So it's a change in y over change in x. So it's marks per hour. Interpret the gradient in context. Right. So the ID gradient is 0 0.8. So for every hour you spend revising, your mark goes up by 0 0.8. So for every hour, so that's your one unit going across an hour spent revising, comma, the score increases by 0.8 marks. There you go. Well, look what I've done here. I've done it as one unit going across and how much it goes up by. And that's important. The layout of that is ridiculously important. So then it says interpret the y intercept in context. So I've got a y intercept here of 5. So what does that mean? If I spend no time revising, I'm going to get a score of 5. So. Five. Don't revise, and we get a score of five marks. There. So interpret the PNCC in context. So there's a, a fairly good positive correlation there. So as the time spent revising. Is that spelled right? How many eyes have we got in there now? Increases, comma, the test score. Increases. Which is what you'd expect, isn't it, really? Right then. So it says we can use regression lines to estimate values not given in the original data set. So interpolation is if I've got stuff within the, in the range of values. So if I was looking for something between here and here, it's interpolation. But if I'm looking at something outside of here, it's extrapolation. There. So it says here you should not extrapolate because you don't know for certain what's going to happen. People get paid millions and millions of pounds per year for extrapolating to see what happens next. So where all the big money is. Right, what time are we for? I'm going to do one more. Can I do one more question, do I reckon? If I do this one more question. Uh, right, so I've got something here. So I've got an experiment on the token. All right, so this is burning wood one. So uh, we've got the moisture 
and we've got the calorific value. So X is moisture and Y is calorific value there. Right, so if you look, there's quite a strong negative correlation there, isn't there? So it's going to be minus 0.9 there. So it says the equation of the regression line is minus 0.0758 plus 5. So interpret it in context. Okay. Right. So remember, uh, you're changing x is, is, is percentage, isn't it, of moisture. So for every 1% of moisture content, The calorific value decreases by 0 0.0758. What's the units? It's megawatt hour, megawatt hour per ton, is it? Megawatt hour per ton. What you're saying with the wood is if the wood's dry, it'll burn. If the wood's wet, it's not going to burn. That's what we kind of say. Uh, so the five point three five. So that's kind of like. Uh, so this is a calorific value when the wood has no percent moisture. It's as dry as anything. It's the best thing for burning, because this is drier than anything. There, use the equation to estimate the wood's colour, but it's got a value of 27%, okay? So I can just put X as 27, can't I? So that's X is 27. So if X is 27, Y is minus 0 0.0758, lots of 27, plus 5.35, so that's going to give me a 3.30 megawatt hour per ton. If it is megawatt hour, might not be. Uh, so then give a general reason why your equation should not be used to estimate when it has a, a value of 80%. Right, so if it's got 80%, let's have a look. So y is... Oh, it's minus. How can I have minus? So I've got negative value. If it doesn't make sense. Uh, no, I can't. There. It's like it's taking in the energy as opposed to giving it off when it burns. Uh, give a specific reason based on the context of the question and with numerical support why it can't be used. So I mean, that's quite simple, isn't it? So, when, so, so why is minus 0 0.71 when x is 80? Uh, it doesn't make sense. So it's just kind of the same as above, isn't it, really? It doesn't make sense. And that's it, that's, that's that lesson done. The data always feels quite bitty, um, but it's worthwhile. I'll see you later, bye-bye.